In this video, we want to take a look at solving equations involving hyperbolic functions. Now, we don't need an introduction to this video. All we're going to do is just jump straight into the questions. So I've got question one here. We're asked to solve 6 shine x minus 4 cosh x is equal to 4. Now, the first thing we should always do here is check whether we can use any of the hyperbolic identities. In this case, we can. So what we need to do here is just use the exponential definition. We've got 6 lots of e to the x minus e to the minus x that's all over 2 we know minus 4 cosh x here so that's minus 4 lots of e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2 and this is all equal to 4 okay so all I've done there is just replace shine x here and cosh x with their respective exponential definitions so what I can do here is simplify so it would be 3 lots of e to the x minus e to the minus x. Again, just simplify here. So it would be minus 2 lots of e to the x plus e to the minus x. So we write that here. That's 3 lots of e to the x minus e to the minus x. And we've got minus 2 lots of e to the x plus e to the minus x. And that's all equal to 4. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply out each bracket here with the respective constant on the outside. So 3 lots of e to the x, that's 3 e to the x. 3 times minus e to the minus x, so 3 times minus e to the minus x, that's just going to give me minus 3 e to the minus x there. We've then got minus 2 times e to the x, that's minus 2 e to the x, minus 2 e to the x. And then minus 2 times e to the minus x, we're going to get minus 2 e the minus x there. That's all equal to 4. What we need to do now is just simplify the left hand side here. So we've got 3e e to the x minus 2e e to the x, so in that case we just get e to the x. I've then got minus 3e e to the minus x minus 2e e to the minus x, so in total there we've got minus 5e to the minus x minus 5e to the minus x and that's all equal to 4. Okay now what I want to do here is set this equation equal to 0. So this is equal to 4, but what I'm going to do now is subtract 4 off both sides. So we get e to the x minus 5e to the minus x minus 4 is equal to 0. Okay. Now this minus 5e to the minus x, that's the same as minus 5 over e to the x. So I don't want that fraction. So what I'm going to do here is multiply through the full equation by e to the x. So in that case then, we get e to the 2x. Um, that would be minus 5 then. It would times through by e to the x. That's minus 5. And then I'm going to get minus 4e to the x. So minus 4e to the x. And we've got the minus 5 here. Okay. And the reason I've written it like that is because what I can recognize now is we have a disguised quadratic. Okay. So if I say that e to the x here is equal to y, then what I've got here is y squared minus 4y minus 5 is equal to 0. So from here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize. So I factorize this here. I'm going to get y uh, minus 5 and y plus 1. And that's all equal to 0. So in that case then, if our solutions here are y minus 5 equals 0, so in that case y would be equal to 5, and this one here would be y equals minus 1, if I replace that now with e to the x, what I get then is e to the x equals 5 and e to the x equals minus 1. Now we can omit one of these solutions straight away here because there's no values of x such that e to the x would be equal to minus 1. So that solution there can't be true, so we'll just cross off that full solution. So in that case then, e to the x is equal to 5. So in that case, I just want the value of x here need to get rid of the exponential here and to do that we just take the natural logarithm of both sides. If I take the natural logarithm of the left hand side we just get x and on the right hand side here we get the natural logarithm of 5 there. Okay and there we have it so that's our solution to question 1. Moving on to question 2 here we're asked to solve 2 cosh x minus 5 shine x minus 10 is equal to 0. Now the first thing we should do here is check whether we can use any of the hyperbolic identities for this question we can't, so all I'm going to do here is use the exponential definition for cosh x and for shine x. 
So what I've got here then is two lots of e to the x plus e to the minus x, and that's all over 2. With a minus 5 shine x here, so minus 5 lots of e to the x minus e to the minus x all over 2. Minus 10, and that's equal to 0. So all we've done here is just replace cosh x and shine x with their respective exponential definitions. So what I want to do here now is just simplify. So these twos will cancel. That's going to leave me with e to the x, e to the x plus e to the minus x. I've then got minus 5 lots of shine x here. So obviously, I can simplify this 5 and this 2 just like we did here. So in that case, I'm going to multiply everything through by 2. That's 2 lots of e to the x plus e to the minus x. And then I'm going to get minus 5 lots of e to the x minus e to the minus x. And then minus 10 times that by 2, I get minus 20. And that's all equal to 0. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this first bracket, multiply that by the 2 here on the outside, so that's going to be 2e to the x plus 2e to the minus x. Do the same now with this bracket here and the minus 5. So that's going to be minus 5e to the x. So minus 5e to the x. And then do take care here with the signs. So minus 5 times minus e to the minus x. That will become positive. So plus 5e to the minus x and then minus 20. So from here I just want to simplify the left hand side. So I've got 2e to the x minus 5e to the x. That's going to give me minus 3e to the x. I've then got 2e to the minus x plus 5e to the minus x. So in total there we've got 7e to the minus x. Then we've got minus 20 here. And that's all equal to 0. So from here we want to simplify this um, equation here. And what you need to recognize here is this 7e to the minus x. We can write that as 7 over e to the x. But obviously I don't want that fraction. So I want to get rid of that denominator. And to do that we're going to multiply through then by e to the x, okay? If we do that here, I'm going to get minus 3e to the 2x, so minus 3e to the 2x. This would then become positive 7, so plus 7, and then this minus 20 here comes up by e to the x, I get minus 20e to the x, okay? And that's equal to 0. Now what you need to recognize here is that we have a disguised quadratic. Obviously, if I'm going to go on to solve this quadratic here, I want to make life a little bit easier. So to do that, I'm going to make this minus 3e to the 2x become positive. Okay, in other words, I'm just going to take it to the other side of this equation. So in that case, then I'm going to get 3e to the 2x. So 3e to the 2x. Obviously, if I take this over to the other side, I need to take everything else across with it. So in that case, I'm going to also subtract 7 off both sides and then add 20e to the x on both sides. Okay, so that's going to be plus... 20e to the x minus 7, and that's equal to 0. Okay? If we use a substitution here, so in that case then, if um, y is equal to e to the x, and what I obtain here then is 3y squared, so 3y squared plus 20y minus 7 is equal to to zero, okay? And from here, all I wanna do is just solve this quadratic. Okay, so factorize this here if we can. In this case, it does factorize quite nicely. We get 3y minus one. We multiply that then by y plus seven. Okay, and that's equal to zero. So for now, just solve here for y, okay? In that case, then I get 3y is equal to one. Divide by the three, so we get that y is equal to a third y is equal to a third. And we also get that y is equal to minus 7. Okay. Now obviously we have this substitution here that y is equal to e to the x. So what I've got then is e to the x is equal to a third. And e to the x is equal to minus 7. Okay. Now there's an issue here with this solution because obviously there's no values of x such that e to the x is equal to minus 7. We cross that solution off, 
So in that case, then e to the x equal to a third. But remember, we're solving for x here. So what I'm going to do now is take the natural logarithm of both sides. So in that case, then x is equal to the natural logarithm of a third. But I could write this then as um, 3 to the minus 1. So that's a natural logarithm of 3 to the minus 1. And then I can use the power rule here, bring that minus 1 in front of the natural logarithm. So what I get here then is minus the natural logarithm of 3 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution there to question 2. So we move on to the very last question here. We have two parts to this question. So for part A, it says using the exponential definitions of shine x and cosh x, prove that cosh squared x minus shine squared x is identical to 1. So for part A here, we're looking to prove this hyperbolic identity. So in that case, then we just need to replace cosh x here with its exponential definition. Do the same then with shine x. So cosh squared x, that's going to be cosh x squared. That's going to be e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And then we square that. Then we're going to do minus shine x squared minus e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 all squared. Okay. So seeing as we have a quotient here, we have this fraction. If we square this, then it's going to be the numerator squared over the denominator squared. Okay. So if we think about this here, I'll just do this down at the bottom. I've got e to the x um, plus e to the minus x. We're squaring this here, so I'm just multiplying it by itself again. So e to the x plus e to the minus x there. Okay, so essentially we're just expanding these double brackets here using file or any method that you're familiar with. I'm going to get e to the 2x. Get e to the 2x. If I then do e to the x multiplied by e to the minus x, that will give me 1. Obviously, I do it again here. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And I've got e to the minus x multiplied by e to the minus x. So in total, there we've got e to the minus 2x. Okay. And that's all over 2 squared, so that's all over 4. That's our cosh squared x there. Do the same here now for e to the x minus e to the minus x squared. So I've got e to the x minus e to the minus x multiplied by e to the x minus e to the minus x. So again, what I'm going to get here then is minus. So e to the x times e to the x, again I'm going to get e to the 2x. This time now, if I do e to the x multiplied by minus e to the minus x, that will give me minus 1. And we repeat that again here. So minus 1, minus another 1, that will give me minus 2. And then minus e to the minus x multiplied by minus e to the minus x. In that case here, we get positive e to the minus 2x. So plus e to the minus 2x. And again, that's all over 2 squared, so that's going to be 4. Okay. So in this case here then, obviously I just need to simplify. Well, they're both over a denominator of 4. So what I've essentially got here is e to the 2x over 4 minus e to the 2x over 4. So they'll just cancel. Same again here. So e to the minus 2x over 4 um, minus e to the minus 2x over 4. Again, they'll just cancel. So what I get left with here is 2 over 4. So 2 over 4 minus minus 2 over 4. Okay, in this case here, this just um, evaluates to give us 2 over 4 plus 2 over 4, so that's 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. Okay, so notice that's equal to the right-hand side, right -hand side here of our identity. That's equal to the right-hand side, and therefore, proof is complete. Okay, so QED, proof complete. Either way, um, that gives us our solution there for pi A. Okay, so that's part A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen just so we've got enough room to answer part B. So let's take a look at part B now. It says, hence or otherwise, solve the equation 3 cosh squared x minus 7 shine x equals 1. And notice here for this one it says, given your answers in terms of natural logarithms were appropriate. Okay, so... Again, the first thing we should always do here when we're solving any equations that involve hyperbolic functions is check whether we can use any identities. Now, the fact that we've 
actually introduce this identity here at the beginning of this question would suggest that we do need um, one of the identities here to answer part B. Okay. Now, notice here I've got cos squared x minus shang squared x is equal to 1, um, or identical to 1 here, but obviously I can say that's equal to 1. And notice I've got cos squared x here. Okay, so what I can do then is rearrange this here to be cos squared x equal to 1 plus shine squared x, plus 1 plus shine squared x. And then we can substitute that into this equation here. Okay, so what I've got then is three lots of 1 plus shine squared x, so that's three cos squared x. We then got minus 7 shine x, minus 7 shine x, and that's equal to 1. So we'll leave it equal to 1 for now. Obviously, what we will need to do after is subtract that off both sides so we can set it equal to 0. Okay, but for now, we'll just leave, we'll just leave it like that. So I'll expand this bracket here with the 3 on the outside. So I'm going to get 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 times shine squared x will give me plus 3. Shine squared x. We've got minus 7 shine x. Minus 7 shine x. And what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to subtract the 1 off both sides. So minus 1 is equal to 0. So from here, just simplify the left hand side. So 3 minus 1 is 2. What I've got here then is 3 shine squared x. Minus 7 shine x. And then 3 minus 1 is 2, so plus 2, and that's all equal to 0. And notice what I've got now is a quadratic equation that's in terms of shine x. Okay. So what we should do here is check whether this factorizes, and in this case it does actually factorize. What I get here is 3 shine x, so 3 shine x minus 1. Multiply, that, multiply this through then by shine x minus 2 shine x minus 2 and that's all equal to 0. If you are struggling to factorize this here obviously what you can do is replace shine x with um, y and then just change it to from a disguised quadratic to a regular quadratic factorize like that um, but you don't need to you can go straight into the factorization here okay so from here we can identify the solutions then so 3 shine x minus 1 is equal to 0 so therefore 3 shine x equal to 1 and in that case then shine x is equal to a third okay so that's one solution what i've also got here is shine x minus 2 is equal to 0 so in that case shine x is equal to 2 or so shine x is equal to 2. so our solutions here are given by taking the um, inverse shine of both sides so our shine here so in that case then on the left hand side if we take the inverse shine here that would just give me x. And on the right hand side here, we take the inverse shine. That would be r shine of a third. Do the same here with this equation. So shine x equals 2. Take shine inverse of both sides. On the left hand side, we'll get x. And on the right hand side here, we'll get r shine of 2. Okay. Now from here, obviously I can't give this as my solution because the answers here should be in terms of natural logarithms. So in that case then, we need to use now, so we'll use here um, the notation for the inverse here of shine. So that's going to be as a natural logarithm. So this is in your formula, but you don't have to worry about memorizing this. So r shine x, we're using r shine x is equal to the natural logarithm of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay. So in that case, then if we have our shine of a third, so our shine of a third here, x would be equal to the natural logarithm. That's going to be the natural logarithm of a third. That's x here. The natural logarithm of a third plus the square root of x squared plus 1. If x is a third, if you square that, you're going to get 1 over 9. So 1 over 9 plus 1. 
So I simplify this here, x equal to the natural log room of a third. This square root here, we simplify this, 1 over 9 plus 1, that's the same as 1 over 9 plus 9 over 9, so that would give me the square root of 10 over 9. If I can write that then as the square root of 10 over 3. Okay, so that's one of my solutions there. Do the same here then for x equals r shine 2. So I just line this off here. In that case then, x will be equal. Again, just using the natural logarithm notation for the inverse here. So x is going to be equal to the natural logarithm of x, that's 2, plus the square root of 2 squared plus 1. That's going to be 4 plus 1. So that's the square root of 5 there. Okay. And there we have it. So our two solutions here is x equal to the natural logarithm of a third plus the square root of 10 over 3. And x is equal to the natural logarithm of 2 plus the square root of 5. Okay. And there we have it. So it's quite a long question, but there we have it. That's our solution. And that's it brings us the end of this video on solving equations involving hyperbolic functions. In the next video, we're going to take a look at differentiating hyperbolic functions.